Hi folks, Roland Martin here. You know, I travel around the country to the different boat shows. People are always asking me the one question. They say, what's the perfect rod? What's the perfect bass rod? The number one bass rod in the whole world. And I say, hey, you know, there's a whole lot of rods made. I work with Favorite Rod Company, for example. They make 30 or 40 different models, sizes, shapes, and lengths. Why is that? Because there's a lot of different ways to fish in a lot of different parts of the country. Let's take the number one way of catching a bass. From Connecticut to, Cal to California, a plastic worm like this Cinco, seven foot medium action rod, a five inch Cinco with a 3 16 ounce weight, a 14 pound test line, and I like a high speed reel. But the secret is the seven foot medium action rod. Now I can make a long cast with that because I use a lot with two hands, but I can also make a good accurate cast with it. But you know, plastic worms, there's a lot of ways to fish plastic worms. What about the spinning rod enthusiast? Well, the spinning rod enthusiast, he wants to fish clear open lakes. He might want to go to a spinning rod like this five and a half foot. Uh, actually, this is six foot medium action rod again. I have this coupled up with a actually a little bit of braid with a leader and I have some 15 pound test leader here so I can skip this under docks I can throw it around the the rocks in a good clear lake it's just a little bit lighter outfit but again it's a perfectly good worm rod and then going all the way to the other extreme what about a Carolina rig this is a seven foot rod I can make a long cast with a big heavy weight and I have a big long leader entirely different rod so that's three rods for just worm fishing but again, I use mostly the seven foot medium action rod. Let's take my second choice of, of rods. I fish a lot of, of reaction baits. I fish a lot of spinner baits, for example, a lot of buzz baits, for example, and a lot of chatter baits, for example, like this half ounce chatter bait. And what I choose for this is I like a good heavy duty rod that I can have two hands I can make a long distance cast with, long and accurate. I like at least for heavy line, I like the 20 pound, 17 to 20 pound test line for say Okeechobee and say the south. If it's in clear water, say Lake Mead, I can get by with say 14 pound test line. But again, that long rod makes for a long cast with the long handle. I use the high speed reel because I can use that buzz bait, go fast. I can take a spinner bait right up on top of the water, wake it along, and I can do a lot with the, with the rod. And why I use monofilament is it stretches. And I load up on the rod way out there, just crank it down, load, load everything up like a big giant rubber band. And when he comes up to jump, it's a big stretchy rubber band and he doesn't get off as well. Use braid in this situation, a lot of them will jump off. Well, let's take my third choice here, top water. It's so much fun, the visual action of watching a great big five pound bass, for example, hitting a topwater plug. This is a walking bait. This is a Zara Spook type bag. Actually, I made this plug. This is a handmade plug. And I'm throwing this on 20 pound test line. I'm throwing it on a six and a half foot rod, medium action six and a half foot rod, because I think I can wake a thing walk back and forth when you twitch it. I get the cadence just right with a six and a half foot rod. If it's a seven or seven and a half foot rod, the cadence isn't right. A little short rod, the cadence aren't right. For me, six and a half, I get the walk just perfect. And I like monofilament again, I'll tell you why. With a top water plug, if you use bray, if you use uh, uh, fluorocarbon, for example, using fluorocarbon is heavy. And on a long cast, fluorocarbon starts to sink. It sinks. And so if you're slow in your, in your retrieve, all of a sudden your line's going under the water like this and it's pulling the lure down. It actually, actually will cause a lure like a Zara Spook on a long cast to actually go under the water. So you don't want to use fluorocarbon for top water. You want to use monofilament. I like 20 pound test monofilament. I like a high speed reel again. But again, this is the big sexy series by Favorite. Again, I, I, I use the Favorite rods, but uh, and I, I really like the favorite rods, but I recommend a six and a half foot medium action rod. <clears throat> okay. Now, let's take another type of top water. It's a little bit different top water. This is a real heavy duty rod because I like to do a lot of lily pad fishing, a lot of heavy brush and cover fishing, a lot of weeds with a frog. Big old weedless frog and some real thick stuff. 
You, now you, you want braid. Now that's the advantage of 65 pound braid. I've talked to all the good frog guys. They use heavy braid and they use a heavy rod. This is actually a rod by favorite. It's called the, the Flares Frogging and Flipping Rod. It's a really heavy duty rod just for frog fishing. And I put it in my stomach, make a long cast, really anchor it down. And when they hit it, I give them a little slack like a worm and bam, I really set the hook. You really have to give them a lot of pressure to get them out of those weeds. So a frog rod is a big, heavy duty rod. 65 pound test braid, big, heavy rod. Okay, now <clears throat> let's go to light open water. Let's go to cranking. Cranking is such a big deal in so many lakes. You don't need a heavy rod for this. You don't need heavy line for this. If you're using a crankbait in 10 or 15 feet of water, you're out in open water. You're off the points. You're off the rocks. You're off a, uh, some type of structure, and there's probably very little heavy cover in the area. So I use 10-pound line. I either use 10-pound in a, in a fluorocarbon 10-pound, or I use a, a uh, monofilament in a 10-pound. But a, a 10 or 12 pound test line is pretty much what I crank with, even for big bass, because you have open water. So to deal with it, I use a big long rod, seven foot rod. I want a kind of a lighter action. I want to kind of go down to the, the medium light or even light actions. Some of the guys even use a fiberglass rod because they're using a monofilament that stretches a lot. You're not putting a lot of pressure on them. You want to just keep the line tight and let the fish kind of work back and forth and finally the hooks work in on 10 pound line. So almost all the deep water cranking guys are using long light rods and light line. Everybody. So now this happens to be a little Yamamoto thing that goes down about 10 feet. But with that 10 pound line and a real long cast, I can actually go deeper than what they recommend. So if you make a long cast with really light line, you can get plugs deeper than what's recommended on the package itself. So that's a real trick. But the other thing about light line is I get twice as many strikes in clear open water cranking a crankbait with light line than I do heavy line. It's just day and night. Somebody who uses the same plug on a 20 pound line might not get a single strike for the day. The same plug with 10 pound line, you might have a beautiful limit. So it's light line is a necessity for crankbait fishing. <clears throat> okay, we're getting down to the nitty gritty. We're some favorite, favorite deals for mine now. Now we're talking about the big deal. This last year, I set the world on fire with swim baits. This is the big hardtail grub by Yamamoto. It's on a big seven aught hook. It's got a little quarter ounce weight on there. I'm throwing this on 50 pound braid. This is the big Emperor series, seven foot, three inch rod. It's a real heavy duty rod, it's heavy action, not the light action, it's a heavy action. 7.3, it's, it's pretty much a flipping stick. Again, I'm using a high speed reel, 50 pound braid, right straight, to the, right straight to the swim bait. I'm throwing it out there, I'm actually fishing it like a worm sometimes, letting it sink to the bottom, lift it up, let it sink. Sometimes just reel it along straight and steady. When they hit it, it is a plastic worm. So when I get the strike on the swim bait, I have the rod in my stomach, I, I, get, I go forward, go down, and now I'm anchored here and I really set the hook, much like a plastic worm. But swim bait fishing is a brand new type of fishing that is really sweeping the country. And from Connecticut to California, they're, they're big fish are being caught on big swim bait. So that's really something you need to really work on. But again, a flip and stick type of rod. Okay, here's my number one rod. I've won more tournaments caught more big fish and had more fun on a flipping stick. A seven and a half foot heavy duty flipping stick. This is actually an Emperor series. They're extra heavy. It's a seven four. It's not a seven six, but it's a seven four, almost seven six. And it's, and I have it rigged up with 65 pound braid. Okay. Now here's another thing that I might do on the 65 pound braid. I might take a magic marker and I might darken it a little bit right there at the lure. That kind of helps some. But 65 pound braid, this is a big half ounce weedless jig. It could be a craw worm, it could be a plastic worm, 
but it's usually connected with a pretty heavy duty weight because I'm fishing in a lot of heavy sloppy stuff and big heavy lily pads, big matted up grass. I'm flipping in big trees. I'm flipping in all the big heavy cover things that you probably throw nothing else in there because it's just terribly nasty. But I have a rod and here's the secret of flipping. It's a 200 and something pound guy over against a five pound bass. I know it's a little bit of an overkill, but to get them out of those logs and get them out of that cover and get them out of that heavy cover, you need to put a lot of pressure on them quick. So I flip in there and this is so important to do. I flip in and when they hit it, I just, I go from this high rod position and when they go dunk, because remember this, this is a braid. It has a lot of sensitivity. So they go dunk. I have enough time to reel down quickly, almost straight to the fish, and then really slam it into them. I can't set the hook here. I'll break the rod or break the ceiling or break the lights because I really hit them hard. But I throw it out there, have the rod kind of an upper position like this when I feel the tick, go down, boom, all within three seconds. Get it quick. Don't let them have it for five or six or eight seconds. Three seconds is even more than I do. I do like a second and a half, but it's just enough time to have it out there, have the rod in this upper position so you can feel with the rod in the upper position, you're feeling well. And you're making your pitch and flip and all of a sudden the dunk, reel it down, wow! You got them, son, and it's a big fish. Now, so I've shown you seven or eight different rods and different rod applications for just all across the country, for every kind of fishing you can imagine. So just, yeah, sometimes they say, well, how many rods do you own, Roland? I got about 100 over there, about 100 over there. A lot of them are broken, they're old rods. Old, I don't throw rods away. But I'm telling you, you need a lot more than just one or two rods. To bass fish properly, I'd say you need at least six as just a starter. And you can go from there as well. Well, I hope this has been informative to you. Hey, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm having a ball doing it. My son Scott's helping me out. I'm doing, I'm taking you out and showing you a lot of big fish in the process, but this is real good information. You have to have the right rod. So thanks for watching.